land managers to improve forest health. Everyone agrees that we must increase the pace of restoration work to limit the impacts of catastrophic wildfires and improve the long-term health of our forests. Bedrock environmental laws like the National Environmental Policy Act make sure that the public voice is heard and that critical habitats are protected not only for species that rely on our national forests and grasslands, but also for Americans who depend on these lands for their drinking water and economic livelihoods. NEPA also helps the Forest, Server con Forest Service consider science-based alternate proposals for the benefit of local landowners. The Forest Service already has a variety of administrative tools to expedite NEPA reviews in emergency situations to protect public safety, property, or important natural resources. The National Forest Management Improvement Act, which we are discussing today, does contain some new thinking and potentially useful concepts that, if done right, could help the Forest Service achieve the long-term goal of healthy, sustainable forest. For example, the draft bill aims to provide incentives for collaboration, which has been identified as a priority by witnesses from both sides of the aisle. It also proposes some creative ways to finance forest restoration projects developed through collaboration. However, these helpful provisions do not offset the many serious concerns raised by this legislation. As currently written, the draft irresponsibly chips away at the environmental safeguards of the National Environmental Policy Act and places tremendous burdens on citizens seeking to participate in the public review process of Forest Service projects. I want to share a few examples from the bill to illustrate these concerns. The bill expands the reach of categor categorical exclusions under NEPA. Categorical exclusions allow agencies to limit environmental reviews in certain situations and can be a valuable tool when used responsibly. But this bill goes too far. Title I of the discussion draft would categorically exclude or exempt a wide range of timber and, timber and restoration projects from critical environmental analysis and review, meaning that thousands of acres of sensitive ecosystems would be much more vulnerable to degradation and damage. More specifically, Section 103 of the bill would irresponsibly expand what activities qualify for this categorical exclusion and the size of such projects. As I just mentioned, we all agree that there are situations where these exemptions can be valuable, which is why last year's Farm Bill established certain categorical exclusions for projects up to 3,000 acres. This legislation goes beyond the Farm Bill by eliminating provisions that require scientifically sound restoration practices and proposes a five-fold increase, up to eight square miles, in the size of a project that qualifies uh, for an exemption from environmental review. The bill attempts to justify application of some of these exemptions by only making them available to projects developed via collaborative process proposed by a resource advisory committee or covered by a community fire protection plan. But the Forest Service need only perform very limited public engagement actions to meet the collaborative process standard as defined under the 2014 Farm Bill, setting a low bar for project planning that could apply to a wide range of activities. I am concerned that the provision could allow large-scale, scientifically unsound restoration projects to move forward with little review or consideration of alternative proposals. Titles two and three of the draft would limit judicial review and would severely limit public partici participation in agency decision-making after an action is announced. Section 204 prevents citizens from filing for restraining orders and preliminary injunctions to challenge any reforestation activity. This type of relief is vital because early intervention can fix problems with reforestation plans before they get started. While this hearing will largely focus on provisions that were included in this draft, it is worth noting that this bill does nothing to address the funding challenges caused by fire borrowing, the practice of transferring funds away from forest restoration projects to be used in fighting wildfires instead. As we will hear from Chief Tidwell, spending more than half of the agency's budget on wildfire management squeezes out funds needed for all the other critical forest service programs. I hope that this committee can work together to pass H.R. 167, the Wildfire Disaster Funding Act. This bipartisan initiative will ensure that national forestry funding can be used to fulfill its original purpose, to ensure our nation practices good stewardship of our national forests for the benefit of all Americans.
Public lands, including our national forests, belong to all Americans. They are a public good. We should reject provisions that er erode NEPA and make it more difficult for citizens whose land it is to participate in the decision-making process. Uh, I do have a letter from a group of organizations have who've, uh, who've expressed concern about this bill, and I'd like to ask unanimous consent to enter it into the record. Without objection. 